When I was about seven or eight years old, there was this creek in the middle of a forest behind my house that I used to play at all the time. One side of the creek was bordered by a dirt wall about five feet high. I used to jump over the creek from one side to the other, and it was fun to pretend I knew parkour. Then, one day, I went out to the creek, and lying in the middle of it was a brand new football. Now, I want to mention an important detail. The creek's depth made it so that the top half of the football stuck out of the water. The top half was completely dry, so it wasn't like the ball was just rolled into the creek. It was placed there. Written on the top of the football in black permanent marker were the words, Johnny Jumps, and underneath that phrase was a phone number. Now this is weird because my name is Johnny. I picked up the football and went home, obviously very confused and kind of scared. Whoever put that ball there had been watching me. They placed it directly where I would jump over the creek when I played by myself. I grabbed the cordless phone and I called the number. It was the number to Homeland Security. Yeah, fucking Homeland Security. The fucking number you call when you think a terrorist attack is about to go down. It was basically Super 911, especially seeing as this was only a few years after 9-11. I quickly tried to explain my situation to the lady on the phone, and she told me it was okay, and to not call the number again. I instantly ran and told my mum what had just happened, and she was just as confused as I was. My parents are divorced, but when my dad came over later that evening to drop something off, I told him what happened as well. He asked me to give him the football, and he said he was going to look into it. I gave it to him, and he left a few minutes later. I kept asking him if he ever figured anything out, and he would give me vague answers, or try and dodge the question altogether. This turned into a few weeks of me asking, which then turned into a few months. Then, he started acting like he didn't know what I was talking about. That was about ten years ago, and if I ask him about it now, he says that he has zero memory of this ever happening. He doesn't remember the football at all. My mum does, but only vaguely. To this day, I have absolutely zero idea who was watching me, why they put the football in the creek, why they wrote Johnny Jumps on it, and I especially have no fucking idea why they put the number to Homeland Security on the ball. I never really thought too much about this incident until I was older, when I realised how fucking creepy this whole thing was. I continued to live by that creek for a few more years, and continued to play and jump over the creek until I moved away. There were no teenagers in my neighbourhood. I was the oldest kid. All of my neighbours were very friendly, and I knew them all personally. None of them were ever creepy to me, and nothing else strange ever happened in the 12 years I lived there. When I was five years old, and my sister was four, I woke up on a stretcher in the hospital. All I remember at first are incredibly bright lights and sterile white walls. I think I may have been strapped down, but I don't remember. A pretty nurse with curly blonde hair and bright red lipstick kept worrying over me. I have no idea why I didn't put up a fight, because I do remember there being a tube down my throat. To this day, I can't stand the thought of gagging or throwing up. For some reason, I couldn't understand why she was so worried. I just wanted her to laugh, so every time she would give me the next shot in my arm, I would try to gasp look at her and then roll my eyes and pretend to pass out. I'd open my eyes and let out a muffled laugh, and she would smile. My dad would randomly burst into the room. He looked terrified. I didn't understand why he kept leaving until way later, when I was told they had my sister and I in opposite rooms. Apparently, my heart stopped nine times. It wasn't long until my sister and I found out our mother had tried to overdose us on her pills. 
It was another two decades before I realized she didn't have a psychotic break like I thought. She was just mad at my dad for drinking and wanted to get back at him. When I was a kid, I saw a bunch of people get gunned down at a bus station in San Pedro Sula, Honduras. A few moments after, a shirtless guy with a revolver jumped on our bus, walked up about midway and then decided to take off from the side door. Just a few seconds later, police came onto the bus with AK-47s, looked around, got off, saw the guy run to another bus, and started blasting holes through the bus's windows, with no care at all for the innocent people on board. Passengers were killed. The shirtless guy was shot a couple of times and hobbled off the front of the bus where he was swiftly gunned down. Fucking Honduras, man. When I was six, I went on a week-long family reunion at a lodge somewhere. I only have a few vague memories of this, mostly involving candy like many of my early memories. Years later, I had a couple of vivid nightmares about this lodge, and also about a man, 60-ish and overweight, with bright blue eyes and white hair that had vacated the top of his head. The more disturbing details of these nightmares aren't important. Dreams, after all, are very unreliable sources. But I do have one real memory of this vacation that is very clear. I was lying in bed one night, long after my siblings had gone to sleep. I never had trouble sleeping as a child, but this night I was wide awake when I heard something at my window. I ran to my parents' room crying hysterically and pounded on the door so hard that my fists hurt. The memory ends there, but years later, when I started having the nightmares, I asked my parents about it. That was when I found out that when they checked out my room that night, they found the screen cut open from the outside and a small ladder leaning against the window. My parents had us sleep in their room, and we left early the next day. What would have happened if I was able to sleep that night? I think I'd rather not know. When I was about six or seven, I used to take swimming lessons in a local pool after finishing school twice a week on Wednesdays and Fridays. On Fridays, Mum would take me into McDonald's to get a milkshake as a treat afterwards. I'd sit and drink the shake, and then we'd head home, no problems. This day was different. I'd finished my shake, and wanted to use the toilet before we left. So in I went, into the ladies on my own as I usually did. I noticed one cubicle was locked, and thought nothing of it. I went into the second, did my thing, flushed, and noticed that the person in the other cubicle was unlocking their door too. I hadn't heard them flush. As I exited, I could see that it was a man. Old, disgusting, and tall. Why was he there? I innocently said, This is for the ladies only, mister. He replied, Why do you think I'm in here, little girl? It's music to my ears. Where's your mummy? He took a few strands of my hair and twirled them between his grim fingers and reached a hand to grab me by the shoulder. I shook out of his grip and ran as fast as I could to my mum. I told her what happened. She told an attendant, but by the time they checked, he had managed to slip out unnoticed and into the busy street. I hope he never managed to get his hands on any little girls. When I was younger, maybe around 11 years old, my family and I were on vacation in South America, near the border of Ecuador and Colombia. We were on a bus, but we weren't moving at all, because some drug lords were making an example out of some guy not too far in front of us. Three guys held him in place, while another pulled out a knife and stabbed the man in the throat. They wouldn't let any traffic pass until they were finished. We were close enough to the border for some policia to see exactly what was going on. 
they didn't do shit. The look in his eyes as he realized he was slowly dying has haunted me ever since. When I was younger, I used to live by the woods and could see a cemetery from my back porch. One Easter, I remember waking up and seeing the Easter Bunny in my room. It looked like one of those terrifying costumes. You know the ones, those Easter Halloween hybrids. And what really gets me is that I distinctly remember smelling wet hay. When I woke up, I didn't tell anyone. But there was an extra Easter egg in my house that my parents didn't hide. Years later, when I was in high school, this memory came back to me. And I asked my parents if they ever dressed up like the Easter Bunny and came into our room. They said no, never. They would never go through that much trouble. My sister, who I had shared a bunk bed with when this happened, said that she remembers when the Easter Bunny came into our room, and also made a remark about the hay smell. I never told her that detail, and there's absolutely no way she could have known about that smell without actually having experienced it as well. I was terrified that we both remembered seeing a person dressed as an Easter Bunny in our room. To make it even weirder, I told the friends I sat with at lunch what happened. One of the girls was my neighbour from across the street. She told me one Easter a long time ago, she looked out her window during the night and saw the Easter Bunny standing in her driveway. I had chills. Even to this day, I'm terrified of people in rabbit costumes. My scariest childhood memory is being stalked through the woods by a cougar. My aunt owns a nice big property out in the backwoods, and cougar sightings aren't all that uncommon. Her friends will frequently call her and report sightings so that she can bring her dogs in. Anyway, I was about six or seven, and I was exploring some old overgrown trails near her house, with my mum, cousin and aunts. We go pretty deep into the woods, and it starts getting dark, so we start heading back. Then, we noticed everything was eerily silent, and our parents were acting weirdly, scanning the woods, looking in all directions. Then, we hear a low growl, too close for comfort. Thinking back, it was unmistakably a cougar's growl. Then, the house comes into view about 200 or 250 metres away. One of our aunts says, Guys, we'll race you back. Go. And she, my cousin and I bolt for the house, and we notice my mum and other aunt are still staring something down in the woods, backing away slowly. We eventually all get to the house. They locked the door, and told us we weren't actually playing a game, but fleeing an angry cougar. My father died when I was three years old. I vividly remember walking to the bed where he lay after he died, seeing his purple face with a dribble of the chicken soup my mother was trying to get him to eat still running down the left side of his face. I remember not crying, just being very confused. Then I walked out of the room and went to my bedroom and watched Power Rangers. To this day, my mother, who never lies to me, adamantly maintains that she had a neighbour take me to their house as soon as my father began to pass away, and that I never saw him like that. She says that by the time I got back to the house, the room had been shut and locked for quite a while. The rest of my siblings attest to this, but my memory persists. Nobody ever told me what he looked like when he died, let alone that he was aspirating chicken soup when it happened. I have no idea where this memory comes from. I have a story that was a mystery until a few years ago. When I was five, I had a big bay window that faced into our backyard. One night I was sitting in my bed with the curtains open, reading, when I suddenly heard a loud thump on the window. I look up and there's a fucking zombie pressed up against my window, staring at me with filmy eyes. I immediately lock up, not knowing what to do. 
I was the kid who never had nightmares, so wasn't afraid of the dark. Basically, I knew that monsters weren't real. But there one was, slowly sliding down the window. Screaming, I ran out of the room, practically gibbering in fear to my grandparents. Once they finally calmed me down and got me to talk, they took me outside and showed me that nothing was there. That might have been the end of it, but when I woke up in the morning, there was a greasy smear on the window, and what looked like a little piece of flesh. However, when I pointed this out to my grandparents, they said maybe a bird hit it, and that was the end of it. For years and years after this, I was terrified of the dark, had to have nightlights everywhere, and even wet my bed a couple of times because the hallway was too dark to get to the restroom. I also started having really bad nightmares because of it. So, this was an unexplained mystery to me for almost 20 years, when, a couple of Thanksgivings ago, my family was talking about weird things that had happened to us. I told them my story, and my uncle starts absolutely howling with laughter. Once he could breathe again, he told me what really happened. At the time it happened, my uncle was living in the house next door to us. He had a friend who worked in special effects for movies, and had asked my uncle to let her refine the makeup look she was working on for a floating corpse. It turns out he was coming home from that, still had the makeup on because he wanted his wife to see it, and noticed me in bed when he cut through our yard as a shortcut. Thinking it'd be hilarious, he slammed against the window to scare me, then went home and promptly forgot about it for years, leaving me traumatized and mentally scarred. Thanks, uncle. Hey Lazy Legion, wow I haven't called you that in a while. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any scary or weird childhood memories of your own, let me know about them down in the comment section below. Nuke the fudge out of that like button to avoid being kidnapped by a group of goblins, and I'll have another video for you all very, very soon. Stay spooky, and remember, the best things happen in the dark.